Hello everyone, my name is Kelly Johnson and I'm a Curriculum Officer at NCFE. You're very welcome to this webinar for Unit 4 of the Level 1 and Level 2 Technical Award in Graphic Design. I'm joined today by Leslie Davis, one of our External Quality Assurers and as a Subject Specialist in Graphic Design. The plan for today's webinar is to give you an overview of this VSERT qualification, to provide a summary of the learning outcomes and grading descriptors for Unit 4. Then we'll look at a Level 2 piece of work, a Level 2 distinction piece of work, and finally, to address any questions you may have. But first, I'd like to do a quick poll on how confident you're currently feeling with the marking and grading of the Unit 4 work. One is little or no confidence and 10 being very confident. So if you could just tell us how you're currently feeling. Okay, we've got some responses coming through. It's a bit of a mixed bag at the moment. We've got 25% who are feeling not as confident. We've got a middle of the road, five and six, 50% and 25% feeling that they're like seven to eight. So I'll just leave that poll open for another 10 seconds or so. Okay, I'm gonna close that poll. And like I said, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, we've got some that are feeling not as uh, not very confident, some middle of the road, and some feeling um, that they are feeling a bit confident. So let's hope that this webinar helps you feel that more confident with the Unit 4 uh, work for graphic design. So this webinar will be focusing on the Unit 4 work of graphic design, but I'm going to provide a brief summary of the qualification first. If you do need more, a more comprehensive overview, then please join our, or view one of our induction webinars for the Level 1 and Level 2 Technical Awards. The Level 1 and Level 2 Technical Award in Graphic Design consists of an external assessment worth 50% and internally assessed coursework also worth 50%. Graphic Design has four units and each unit is internally assessed with the coursework. The first three units are also externally assessed with the Invigilated External Assessment. Learners are entitled to one resubmission of the internally assessed coursework following the EQA visit. If your learners are doing the level two qualification, then they'll need to achieve a minimum of a level two pass in each internal assessment and the external assessment. QualHub will be your primary go-to for resources, specification, assessments, regulations, and much more. Begin typing your qualification subject area, qualification code, or even just level two technical award, and it will give you a list of suggested qualifications. We do have assignments ready for, to, for you to use on, graphic, on the Graphic Design QualHub page. There is an assignment for each internally assessed unit, and you, you may wish to change aspects of the scenario so that it can be more suitably contextualised for your learners. The first thing on the brief will be the scenario. This is designed to give a real life situation in order to help set the assignment in context. After the assignment, give some further details on the specific information that should be included. And then, the way the evidence can be presented, and we've tried to keep this as open as possible to appeal to as many different learners. On the following page, the grade descriptors are given, which is what the learners need to do for that grade and what the assessor will be using when marking the assessment. Each unit consists of three learning outcomes and each learning outcome is graded. To get a pass in the unit, then the learner needs to achieve a minimum of a pass for each learning outcome. If they get a pass in one outcome and get merits in the other two outcomes, then the final grade is still a pass. The final grade for the unit will be the lowest grade the learner achieved in a learning outcome. However, there is a compensatory grading system when combining all the units at the end. Now, if you're currently delivering this qualification, then undoubtedly you've been affected to some extent by the COVID-19 pandemic, and I want to provide you with an update on the current situation. This qualification can be assessed by teacher-assessed grades, but internal assessment should continue wherever possible. 
the external assessment for this academic year has been cancelled so they would be assessed via a teacher assessed grade and they must be booked onto the external assessment window first before any tag can be submitted. If your learner already has a banked external assessment grade then a tag doesn't need to be submitted which is also true for the internal assessments. If a learner is entitled to a resit, then a tag can be submitted for that also. And we'll be asking for tags on an assessment level rather than a qualification level. That is, you'll be letting us know the tag for the external assessment and the internal assessment separately, rather than an overall tag for the entire qualification. Any tag should be based on evidence you have, and this can be from any already completed or banked assessments, evidence for other assessments, for example, mock exams, teacher conducted formative assessment, internal assessment activity, and so on. And lastly, any classwork or homework that has been completed by the learners. Tags can also be submitted for mid-flight mid learners, those learners that are in their first year of a two-year course, such as year 10 learners, and these learners can have tags for any assessment they would have normally have completed during this academic year. Before tags can be added onto the portal, your tag strategy form must be completed and submitted by the 7th of May of this year. And the deadline for submitting tags onto the portal is the 18th of June this year. The link to the form can be found on our website in the COVID-19 response 2020-2021 section at the top of the page. So that was a brief overview of the qualification. I'm just going to do a quick check if there's any questions before we move on um, to the Unit 4 overview and pass over to Leslie. And I can't actually see any questions coming through. So I'm now going to hand over to Leslie, who will go, who will go through and give you a summary of the unit and show you some sample example work. Thanks, Kelly. Welcome everyone. Good to have you here this afternoon to take a look at Unit 4. Okay, you should now, Leslie. Yeah, I think that's right. Perfect. Thanks very much. No okay, so Unit 4 has three learning outcomes. Um, the first is understand working in the graphic design industry. Learning outcome two, produce a graphic design portfolio. And learning outcome three, review skills as a graphic designer. And we'll take a look at each learning outcome in turn. And at the end of each learning outcome section, I will pause to see if there's been any questions. So please do add any questions into um, the question box on, on your screen. And Kelly will check for those before we move on to the, to the next learning outcome. So learning outcome one, the learner must know about the range of employment opportunities in graphic design, potential entry and progression routes available to them, ways they could present and promote their own work and characteristics of digital and physical portfolios. So this unit has been designed to be delivered at the end of the qualification. So after units one, two and three. Um, and just as reference, this unit is not um, assessed as part of the external assessment. So it's considered as a standalone portfolio unit that can uh, encompass any work that the learners have already created in the qualification. So they don't actually have to create any additional or extra work, although they can do if time permits, but it's not a requirement of this unit. So here we can see the level two grading criteria. So at a pass, learners need to describe relevant opportunities in the graphic design industry and how work is presented. For a merit, to still describe relevant opportunities in the graphic design industry and how work is presented and makes some links between them and a distinction is still describe. So we're not looking for anything more than describe and it's described relevant opportunities in the industry and how work is presented and explains how they are linked. So there'll be a little bit more explanation 
um, required for distinction. It wouldn't just be, a, you know, a sort of a generic basic link there that's required for a merit. And what's important to look here is on the example column on the right. Um, so when the assessor is looking at the evidence of learners describing a range as a minimum for a pass, they must have more than three examples of working in the graph design industries. So that's really important here that you make sure that um, learners are asked to do this. And if we remember rightly, learners will be taught the unit content for a learning outcome and then they'll be issued an assignment and it's up to centres how they want to do that so for example some centres like to deliver the content for learning outcome one and issue an assignment um, an internal assessment task and then deliver learning outcome two deliver an internal assessment task and the same for learning outcome three However, you may, if you want to um, issue one larger assignment or project brief that covers the assessment criteria for all learning outcomes. So entirely up to yourselves how you want to do that, but really important that the content is delivered prior the internal assessment task is issued. And then here we can see the level one assessment criteria um, and here we're looking for identifies one obvious point without explanation and for identify the type of evidence could be a list it could be very basic notes or um, bullet points for a merit um, three points without explanation so a little bit more of a substantial list or notes there and distinction identifies three points but this time for a distinction there needs to be some sort of explanation there and that's examples um, of working in the graphic design industries, possible types of portfolio. And, it, and again, it's exemplified there on the example column on the on the right on this on the grading criteria. So I'm just going to pause to see if there's any questions regarding learning outcome one. No, Leslie, there's no questions come through at the minute. OK, and usually we do find that learning outcome one is quite straightforward, especially as the grading criteria is um, quantified. So assessors usually find that quite straightforward to assess. So we'll move on to learning outcome two. And in learning outcome two, this is the practical application element of the unit. So learners need to demonstrate breadth of work. And again, that's worth work that they've already um, produced. They don't have to produce any additional work here. It's about them producing a portfolio for learning outcome two. Um, editing and selection of work. So they might want need some assistance here. They might have a number of pieces of work that they've created across the qualification. And this is where they can demonstrate skills of selecting their best work for their portfolio. And then selection of format is for level two only. And the format is the format of the actual portfolio that they decide to create and present in. Presentation skills are required for both level one and two. And then at level two, we are also looking for some reasons for choice, so for some justification of why they've chosen that particular type of portfolio. So for example, they might um, decide to use PowerPoint um, to actually create a presentation that they might want to present to their group or their, to their, their tutors, and they might have a series of works within that PowerPoint. They also might want to have a website or a blog or social media page, and again, that's fine. But at level two, there's some justification required for the reasons why they've chose that particular format. Now this has been taken, this is a little bit more guidance here, which is useful. Um, and it has been taken from the specification. So it is available um, on the website, just in the unit specification. And it's important to use this alongside the assessment criteria for learning outcome two. 
So we can see here it gives a little bit more detail about what is required for breadth of work. So learners must have a minimum of six completed pieces of work here, and that's what's determined in that breadth of work. So, and it could be um, across a range of disciplines, or it could be six pieces of work that's in this in, in one discipline. So it doesn't mean that learners um, need to be working across you know, a broad range of advertising and packaging, but there much has, must be six pieces of separate work in there within that portfolio. So regarding editing and selection, learners should review their work, including any experimental work, and this is where they can actually edit. Um, so it might be they might have some photographs of their work. So here they would be looking for some appropriate selection, so the best pieces of work to choose um, for their portfolio, as well as making appropriate adjustments. Um, it might be to editing images. It could be actually if they want to do something physical, it might be printing out and actually making sure that they mount those pieces of work. It might be for an exhibition. Um, so it's again, it's about preparing those those pieces of work here for editing and selection. And then for selection of format, learners should select and use the most appropriate format in which to display their work. And again, all learners in the group may have different responses to this, so they don't have to all um, have the same format for their portfolio. Some, some learners may want to produce digital, some physical, some may want to do something interactive, um, some may want to do some sort of slideshow, and that's fine. So it's quite interesting if if resources permit um, and ex staff expertise permit in your centre um, to give learners a choice of how they would like to uh, present their work for the portfolio. And then presentation skills. Learners need to demonstrate their skills in effective presentation of the actual portfolio. So they will not be credited for the quantity of work, but just remember they do need a minimum of six pieces um, to, to achieve a pass. But careful consideration of the presentation of the work that they have edited and selected is awarded. So it's not it doesn't matter if a student's got even you know sort of 10 or 15 pieces of work, as long as it's a minimum of six and the presentation skills have been demonstrated within that portfolio, that's what will be awarded in the assessment. And then finally, this additional uh, reasons for choice that's required for level two learners. So this is where they will record, record why they have chosen specific pieces of work uh, to include in the portfolio. Um, and it should be really in relation to their own graphic design practice. And if we remember that this unit is meant to be at the end of the qualification, it really is to aid their progression. So the idea is to have a portfolio that they may be able to take um, for an interview or showcase their work online, if that was the method um, that they, you know, for maybe a, a college course may have asked to see some examples of their work. So here we can see the level two grading criteria. And again, very focused on the practical application of them presenting the portfolio. So again, we have had some misinterpretation of this learning outcome too previously, where centres have thought learners have had to create additional work as well as the portfolio, and that's not required. So they just need to um, select from existing work across the qualification. So a pass, learners need to complete and present their graph design portfolio with some degree of accuracy. And the portfolio will show application of technical skills responding to any straightforward problems that arise here. And again, how they could show that response to any problems would be captured in some annotation um, alongside the creation of the portfolio. So, so, so some learners do that by creating a, a production diary. Others may want to create a, a blog of that. Um, and others will just keep some technical notes just to record of how they've actually selected the work and created that portfolio. And a merit um, describes relevant opportunities in the graphic design industry and how work is presented and makes some links between them. 
and then a distinction we've got describes relevant opportunities in the graph design industry and how work is presented and how they are linked there and again there's an example of what that evidence would look like in practice on the right here And then here we can see the level two assessment criteria. And a pass presents graphic design portfolio with some degree of accuracy for a merit, mostly accurately. And then the differentiation at distinction is we're looking for an accurate portfolio there. And again, you'll see in the examples on the right, it's still focusing on this breadth of work, um, which has been defined in the unit specification as at least six pieces of work. So I'll just pause to see if there's any questions. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, yes, there are a few coming through and um, some came through quite early on. So I have been uh, picking those up. The first one is uh, the resources online for the lessons do not contain the level of detail expected from the learning outcome descriptor. Are there any other resources that actually provide the content required delivery? Um, yeah, sometimes it might be just making sure that you're looking in the right area of Qual Hub as well, because there are other graphic design qualifications. And sometimes it can be quite confusing if you, if, for example, if you were just to do a search for graphic design, you might be going to a different qualification and therefore the resources are quite different. So the, the, these particular tech awards have got a lot more teaching and learning resources available um, for all subjects. So it's definitely worth making sure that you're on the right page there. Yeah, and, yeah, and I also, I think uh, maybe also the specification can also be a really beneficial document as well. So we do have a teacher materials, assessment materials included on Qual Hub and then on the portal for unit one, unit two, but the specification can also be a good place uh, to help with that so i hope that's answered your question elizabeth and um, the next question was for learn outcome to tag uh can the number of pieces of work be reduced due to the covid situation she does apologize because she said if i've already mentioned this because she joined late and um, i don't know whether you've uh, referred to our adaptations document catherine um, and i appreciate you know you want answers to these questions there was a little bit of um uh, a tag update at the beginning um, but if, we, if that doesn't answer your question then I can just take that out of this webinar um, and answer your question for you. Yeah just to just to jump in there That's Kelly fine, yeah. the adaptations guidance is actually per it's not it's not generic so there was actually adaptations guidance specifically for graphic design and for each unit so you do you know it, it should be very clear in that guidance document um, of what um, sort of content can be reduced or assessment can be reduced. Yeah, um, yeah. it's definitely sorry, worth Leslie, that's, that's Sorry, Leslie, that's what I was referring to. That's yeah. what's on uh, on the Graphic Design Qual Hub page. Perfect. Um, so if that's answered your question, Catherine, great. If not, just let us know and uh, we can pick this up out of this webinar. Um, Questions come through. So for the tag, can, I think this leads to what we've the answer might just be what we've just said. So for the tag, can we have less than six? You know, I think Leslie, when you talked about minimum of six pieces, um, I don't know if you so, know that off the top of your head. Um, I don't off the top of my head. Okay. But as you know, th this sort of webinar is for units, and I, and I know it sounds quite I ironic, who be <laughs> what we call business mm -hmm. as usual. Yeah. So in a normal circumstance, this is the requirements of, of this particular qualification. And, and I do realise that there's a lot of centres going through um, producing evidence for their sort of strategies and their tag evidence at the moment, because the deadline's cropping up quite soon. Um, but again, it's the adaptions guidance. I wouldn't want to give any divert from that at all in on this platform. So if we could just go back to the adaptions guidance, um, it'd be the best. Okay. Uh, my colleague, um, David Keenan, uh, is also in the on, in the background on the call um, and as, would like to say a few things if uh, that's all right. Yes, hello everyone. Um, I've just been having a, for the tag bit, we can have less than six, can't we? 
Well, which learning outcome was that for? Um, do we know? It's learning outcome two. It's learning outcome two. That's oh, for learning outcome two. Yeah. Well, so any tags would have to be based on the learning outcomes, and within the learning outcomes for the pass, merit, and distinction, I don't see actually for the grading descriptors, it specifically numbering exactly how many pieces. So yeah, because that's the thing that you would be. Sorry, Sorry, go ahead. It, 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 it's exemplified within the specification, within the guidance. So just to, you, that, that's where it's come from. Okay. Okay, again, if, you know, if anyone's still a little bit unsure as, you know, as we're addressing these questions, we, you know, we'll take them offline and, you know, we can provide additional support um, and, you know, have a conversation about your questions or concerns. Um, outside of this webinar, so I hope that's helped answer that one. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Well, the next question. Okay, can you also show me specifically where the unit guidance is? So there are so many documents and links. Uh, yeah, uh, Georgina, we totally feel your pain, and we are looking at actually transforming our uh, website page because it is a little bit difficult to navigate. Um, what we have done more recently is structured it so external assessments are at the top. In, assess in the assessment tab on Qual Hub, and then it's the internal assessment stuff, and then uh, like sample portfolio work. So if that helps navigate a little bit, but if the, if you're looking for anything in particular, I can help you with that outside of this. But the, all the resources, teaching materials, and resources that are available are in Qual Hub, and we also have additional further teaching materials that include uh, lesson plans, a schema work, lesson plans, powerpoints, and worksheets, etc. Uh, within um, the teaching materials that can be downloaded from Qualhub via the portal. So I hope that's helped answer your question. Okay, well, I can't see anything else coming through, Leslie, so there may be a slight okay. delay, but if you, I'll pass um, access okay. back to we'll you. Okay, we'll move on to learning outcomes three. And, if, and again, if, if there is any more questions, we, I'll uh, wait at the end before I move on to the learner work. So we'll move on to learning outcomes three. So this is the learning outcome where learners are required to review their skills as a graphic designer. So the learner must evaluate strengths and weaknesses, technical skills, creative responses, and presentation skills. And again, this is some additional guidance that has been taken directly from the unit specification. And it's important to use alongside the assessment criteria for, learning out, for, for, the, for this learning outcome. So learners will review the aspects of the portfolio. So what is required by strengths and weaknesses, which was that first bullet point on the previous slide. So learners will review the aspects of the portfolio and its presentation which provide a positive description of the learner as a graphic designer and those aspects which provide a less positive description of the learner as a graphic designer. So they'd be looking here of their, you know, the, their ideal role of what they want to be as a graphic designer, what they've disciplined, they've worked in, and then they'll review the strengths and weaknesses of the work that they've produced and how they presented that within the portfolio. And then technical skills, learners will be required to review the use of materials and application of process. And again, this is just the application of process creating the portfolio. So they're not going to be reviewing technical skills, how they've created each piece of work, if you like. It's just about the creation of the portfolio. And again, there's some, it could be a physical portfolio, um, or it could be a digital portfolio. And then creative responses, learners will re review the work produced um, and reflect on their imaginative and original interpretations, uh, the use of visual communication and the suitability of their designs. So what they might have here is they might have some annotation um, to talk about a particular piece of work they've included. And they might say the reason why they chose to include it in the portfolio, does it demonstrate um, maybe some interesting um, design skills or there might be some particular 
editing tools, uh, image manipulation tools that they want to actually use in the portfolio to represent their skill development. And it might be a piece of work that they feel that they've um, responded very well to, to a client brief. Um, so these are all valid reasons why they might select those pieces for their portfolio. And again, it's to showcase the work that they've done at the end of the qualification. And then presentation skills, and this is the ability to use and combine physical or digital graphic components to, in editing the actual images, uh, editing the actual pieces of work, and the actual presentation of the graphic design work itself. And again, that's just been taken straight from the qualification specification, so that's available um, for, for Unit 4 there. So here we can see the levels three, uh, sorry, level two assessment criteria for unit um, for learning outcome three. And again, it's still on describe here. So the grading descriptors always describe a pass, merit, and distinction. Um, so it describes a range of strengths and weaknesses of the graph design practice with support and evidence. And it's also good practice um, to use those bullet points that are actually part of the um, learning outcome as, as you know within the internal assessment task. So learners are actually always encouraged to cover all elements uh, of the review. So that's always good to include in the internal assessment task. Um, and on the Qual Hub, there is an actual uh, sample assignment, sample internal assessment task for this unit. Um, and that will also have, um, you know, an example of how assessors can actually write a task to target all of the criteria for this unit, in particular the evaluation uh, for learning outcome three. So from merit is still described, and again, we're looking for a range of strengths and weaknesses, um, and the support and evidence there is exemplified on the right. So it's things like technical skills, the creative responses, presentation skills, etc. And it also, what's underlined here, for a merit is describes the impact on their graphic design practice. And then to take it up to that distinction, it's still describe, um, but also what's underlined here at the bottom is recognise the different levels of importance here. And then here we can see the level one, Criteria, again, it, it's quantified, so it's usually a little bit easier to interpret. So it, we're looking for at least one strength or one weakness about their practice. Again, making sure it's relevant, it's about this portfolio that they've created. So for a pass, it's either one strength or one weakness. For a merit, it's at least one strength and at least one weakness. So there's, there's both elements there. And distinction identifies more than one strength and more than one weakness. Um, and again, it still identifies, so we're not looking for a great deal of detail there, still quite basic evidence. So again, if you remember, identify it could be things like um, lists or, or bullet points, and that's acceptable there. So they might just have, for example, for a merit, a merit they might just have um, a bulleted, um, a bullet point for a strength and a bullet point for a weakness. Again, it must be relevant um, with regard to a review of that portfolio. And then before we move on to look at a level two example of a past portfolio, I'll just see if there's any questions come in, Kelly. Uh, yes, Leslie, there's a, there's a, just a one or two that have come in um, since we last did a quick check-in, um, but I just before I go through them, I just wanted to say that anyone who um, doesn't quite have the answer yeah, and I've asked if we could have a chat at the end. Yes, that's absolutely fine. Um, it might actually be better if we we spoke verbally. <clears throat> we might be able to understand what, what you're actually asking a little bit uh, more clearly. So that's absolutely fine. Um, the recent question uh, that's come in is what is meant by levels of importance? Leslie. Yeah, so in the evaluation, for, for levels of importance, they might have... Um, trying to think of a specific example here. I'm just going to go back to the criteria. 
from three. Yes, yeah, so what they have to do is they have to have a range of strengths and weaknesses. So that's the focus. So they're going to be identifying strengths and weaknesses of what they've done as a graphic designer. So reflecting on their practice um, and remember that they need to be thinking about that in terms of technical skills, creative responses and presentation skills. So they might have an example when they're talking about levels of importance, they might actually say, I've chosen this piece of particular work that I've chosen, say, for example, it was a logo design. They might say um, this was a particularly strong piece of work or I consider it to be a strong piece of work because they demonstrated good use of maybe using Adobe Illustrator or a particular um, tool in, um, you know, in Illustrator or, or even Photoshop, actually. And they might say, however, even though this demonstrates um, skill development, this actually logo didn't respond accurately to the client brief because the client may have wanted um, a particular color scheme or it may have wanted a particular target audience. So what they would be doing there is they'd be recognizing, recognizing the different levels of importance in the sort of a review of that work of why they've selected it. So, so that's just one example. Um, another example could be maybe if they produced a, a digital portfolio, it might be the quality of the images that they've used so again they might in the review because um, they might say okay i've edited this particular image to be presented on a digital portfolio on it might be a web page it might be on social media however maybe the quality of the image could be quite has been quite poor um, and that could be maybe due to the quality of a photograph or it might be to do with how they've compressed the image it may be appearing quite pixelated and again, what they need to say here is the level of importance, you know, maybe to the audience, an online audience of how, how they're viewing that. So it is important because they need to recognise that if they can't see um, the quality that, you know, of the work that they've produced, um, then obviously that, that lowers um, the audience view of their particular work and their graphic design work that they've, they've selected. So those are the type of things, I mean, they, they might probably sign quite quite high end examples, but we, you know, that there are sort of lower level examples, if you like, that would be acceptable. So it's really just um, a distinction. We're really just looking at that justification and that sort of review and evaluation, the choices they made, why they've selected that for the portfolio, but also they're sort of weighing up sort of the, um, maybe any negative aspects or any problems that they've encountered or indeed what they could do better to improve it. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that's great. Um, was it, did you say there was two questions, Kelly? Uh, no, that was that's all the questions for now. Okay, so I'm going to move on to look at a level two pass portfolio. Um, and I'm going to ask Kelly to remind us where they can download this PDF, because <laughs> I actually can't remember. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, it's actually in the handouts, in the handouts section. Ah. Okay, PDF. so in the handouts, in the handout section, really do encourage you to download this um, presentation. I understand it will be downloaded as a PDF, but that means yeah. you'll have access to these both portfolios, pass and distinction, that you can actually start to look through at your own pace. Really useful activity to do with the assessment criteria in front of you at your own pace. Um, I will go through this with the grades, um, but again, there is some quite a lot of text on each of the pages, so it really is um, a valid exercise to do this at your own pace. And then just before we scroll through, I'll just give you the grades of this. So for a learning outcome one, um, this learner was um, actually awarded a merit. So if you remember the overall unit grade can only be achieved if a merit has been achieved for learning outcomes one, two, and three. So from this particular case, the learner had achieved a merit for learning outcome one, a pass for learning outcome two, and a pass for learning outcome three. So that would mean the overall grade, unit grade is a pass. And the reason, the justification for those, just before we take a look through, just to bear in mind, as we're working through the images on the screen, so although there's lots of evidence for learning outcome one, this is mostly descriptive. 
uh, but it does cover all elements. So this is the reason the justification for merit. So the learner has described a range. So there's more than three. If you remember, there needs to be more than three examples for learn outcome one. Um, so they've explained, described a range of examples of work in the graphic design industries, different types of presentation methods and promotional formats and ways to present and promote their work. There is also some evidence of how examples of working in the graphic design sector and presentation formats are linked. Um, again, to look out for that in the text because that it's those links that's required to move that up to a merit. However, there's not really an explanation that is required for distinction. So they've made some links, they haven't really explained those links. And then for a learn outcome two, it's a pass. Um, the breadth of work seems to be limited as focused just on one brief. Not clear how the portfolio has been presented. There is some relevant annotation regarding choices. Now, it, this is a good example, I think, when we're talking about the six pieces. So there are at least six pieces of work presented. However, some of these are not complete. So these can be considered as experimentation and they've not all been well presented to demonstrate the portfolio skills. So this hopefully will illustrate um, the six pieces of work here. So some of the, they don't all have to be um, completely sort of polished final pieces of work. And then for Learn Outcome 3 was a pass. Um, overall, it was quite a limited evaluation that does not describe the impact of their work to move higher than a pass. It's also quite dependent on comments from others rather than their own, the learner's own review of strengths and weaknesses. So just a few pointers there to bear in mind as we work through. So they started off um, quite a well presented page here to talk about the range of employment opportunities. And again, I do, I do realize there's a lot of text on, on here. Um, so I am gonna go through these quite quickly, but hopefully pause enough that you can sort of get an idea of what the, the learner's done here for learning outcome one. So they've gone on to talk about careers and progression routes. It's quite, quite a nice presentation page here. They talked about entry requirements, which is valid, qualifications they might need. And then they've added here some characteristics of digital and physical portfolios. They talked about presentation techniques, some digital, as well as um, photographing with some brand identity. They talked about illustration as a discipline. Um, some motion graphics as well as a, as a discipline within graphic design. And then they've started to review the differences between digital and physical portfolios and which graphic designer or, you know, depending on the discipline they're working in, might choose a physical or a digital portfolio. Some further examples here. And then they've started actually here to talk about um, a piece of work. So this is where they actually start to um, present the actual six pieces of work here. So they'll, they've presented here the design brief. So that's what they've said that the brief was. They put some illustrations there to accompany that brief. Um, but this, this is actually where they, they're at their portfolio starts to come into context. So they've, they've said what the design brief was. They've explored the brief here. They've actually put some research here to justify their approach to response to the design brief. Then they've got some illustrator research. And then 
even though it's not sort of clearly presented in maybe a portfolio that you might think it's it's probably an example of how these six pieces of work are actually presented so we can actually and they've actually stated here in the center they've annotated to say um what sort of images they've used to influence their own characters design at the top right there so you can start to see their response this is a piece of work that they've actually created um, as part of responding to this design brief and again it sort of jumps back and forth to, to other evidence so it's probably not the best um, choice of presentation and again they've started to have some other examples here of their own work with some annotation of why they've actually what they've done and how they've responded to the brief some further examples so here they've taken some hand-drawn designs and produced them digitally as well and then they've started to think about how to present this um, present their work here and how they might create that And then they've started to actually uh, present the work in sort of a simulated background of how it might look in another uh, presentation format. And again, they've started to think about maybe how it could be used. Um, I think it's in packaging for this. And then they've got a 3D representation. Again, it's the, it's the same piece of work, they're the same illustration there. So again, they've got some further examples of fonts, um, typography that they've experimented with. Again, it's still with the same brief. And again, thinking back to the comment for the evaluation for Learning Outcome 3, it is quite dependent um, on comments from others. And the actual reflection evaluation is actually quite small on the bottom right there. So it's quite a limited evaluation there. So that's just one approach for the, for the pass. Um, and I'm going to move quickly on and answer any questions at the end, because I want to do want to show I'm aware of the time and I do want to show this different approach for level two distinction and again just to remind you for, for the unit to, to have a distinction it must have a distinction for learning outcomes one two and three which this learner does have okay so a different approach again it's entirely up to ideally learners how they wish to respond and and present their work for this unit uh, usually we would expect a portfolio to be separate and then the support and evidence for learning outcome one, how they created the portfolio and the review in another set of evidence. But again, we, you know, we don't prescribe specific ways. It, it, it's up to the centre and the learners. But this is a useful because it's a different approach here. So again, they've got their research about roles. moved quite quickly through that so then they've worked through this quite well so they've got examples as well as some visuals to support the research They've talked about how they might sell their work and then they separate it, which is 
really nice way to present the work if they separate any other evidence uh, from their actual portfolio, which makes it useful for the assessor. So what they've done here is they've actually th thought about how they've actually um, displayed this image and then they've just used this right hand column, which again has also been, they've thought about the presentation, the layout here, of actually how they've annotated this um, to talk about the choices um, what they actually did, why they did it, and why they've included it. And again, purposefully uh, presented it and how it would look in response to that brief and what was required. The second piece here. And again, they've kept a consistent presentation um, layout of the annotation next to it and then again how it might look um, it in situ in reality if you like and it's all quite different pieces of work as well which I think has been put together uh, really quite well So it's uh, valid because it's got an explanation, you know, all of the annotation information's there. So we can really see why they've selected that piece, what they chose to do, how they've developed skills. They've actually also been quite evaluative because they've actually said, you know, however, I think I could have edited the work better here. Um, so they're actually thinking about those problems and those issues, um, especially that sort of level importance uh, that we had a question about before. This is a good example how the learner has actually responded to that within the annotations of each example. And it doesn't have to be for every example. Um, you know, the distinction can be met holistically. And then they've got uh, an evaluation here. And it's quite an honest evaluation that does cover sort of technical skills, um, presentation formats, choices of their work, what they do to improve. So it's quite quite a even it doesn't look such a lengthy evaluation. You know, it, it is actually um, the quality of it is is good, and it's everything's within there. I was just checking that was the last page. So. Kelly, I don't know if you want to take over from this yeah, stage. Yeah, sure. Just yeah. do the poll. Yeah. yeah, thanks for that, Leslie. What I'm going to do now is just before we go to um, answering uh, some final questions, I'm just going to launch the last poll just to see uh, what your confidence levels are now like. Well, so that's quite reassuring that the, the votes that are coming in, uh, the responses that are coming in, but some that have moved up, 20%, 3 to 4, 20%, 5 to 6, and 60%, 78. So that is um, an increase on when we uh, initially did it. So that's that's pleasing. I'm just going to leave it open that for a few more seconds. Yeah, and I think you said there was a question between, the, I think, at the end of the Level 2 Pass portfolio. Yes, what I'll do is once I close this poll, Leslie, I will then okay. um, go back to the questions, and it might actually be easier if we... Um, allow the question, well, I'll read out the questions and then answer, maybe go back to the ones that came in early on and unmute the participants so we can actually talk to them about it. Okay, so I'm just going to close that poll. So yeah, that is reassuring that those have gone up. We've got no one in the one to two. Um, so that's really pleasing. Okay. So, I uh, will go to these questions, Leslie. So one uh, came through was, is the discussion for a design brief or the brief analysis, analysis necessary or can students just add simple annotation to the web pages of an online portfolio to explain their work? And then their evidence for learn outcome three exists as an evaluation of work at the end instead of an ongoing annotation. 
Yeah, that's fine. So the evaluation can be separate. If, if you remember earlier, centres have different approaches and it's up to yourselves. You know, you, you know the learners better than we do. If you think they would respond better to maybe um, have a task for learning outcome one, and then task to just create the portfolio and then an evaluation task at the end, that's absolutely fine. And they don't have to talk about every brief either um, when they talk about each piece of work, as long as they can um, select, you know, sort of give the reasons of why they've selected those pieces of work. And even if that's in the evaluation, that's fine. That's no problem. So as long as we can see the review somewhere, it can be ongoing in the annotation or it can be separate. However, you want to approach that. As long, it's more it's more important that the learner knows what to do. So however you write those internal assessment tasks, that's what really needs to be clear. So the learner knows exactly what to do for each internal assessment task and what they need to submit as evidence. Thanks. Thanks for that, Leslie. Um, next question is. This exemplar is very different to the one used on the last Unit 4 webinar for the level of work, uh, number of slides in brackets shown, and detail. I assume a more succinct one given the circumstances, providing they have met the learning outcomes would be fine. Yeah, so we don't sort of we don't sort of say, you know, it has to be a minimum amount of slides or we have no word counts, this type of thing. So there is lots of different approaches that centres can take. Um, you know, some learners can achieve distinction criteria in, in a lot less slides as long as the as long as the, the evidence meets that sort of gradient descriptor, then that's fine. And remember sometimes as well, I'm sure you've all got students who like to produce lots and lots and lots of work, but you know, it, it may not be relevant or there may be some repetition in there or it may not be um, have enough review in there, it might be very descriptive. So again, it's not the quantity that we're looking for, it's actually quality and if that evidence meets the um, descriptors, then that's fine. Thanks, Leslie. Okay, so thank you for attending this webinar and many thanks to Leslie for her support. If you do have any questions, then please do get in touch either with me, me directly using my email, kellyjohnson at ncfe.org.uk or if I'm unavailable, our general email is curriculum at ncfe.org.uk. Now, I do appreciate that it's half four uh, and some people are starting to leave, which is absolutely fine, but I will remain on, which I'm sure Leslie will, um, if a couple of the attendees uh, have a few questions that they want to ask us verbally. Um, but just please note that when you do leave, though, I'd really appreciate if you can complete uh, the brief evaluation to help us improve our, our service. Uh, thanks again, everyone, and stay safe. Leslie, I'm going to unmute Georgina because I think it's Georgina or Georgiana. She had a, a question. Is that okay? Are you okay to stay on? Yeah. 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 Okay. Attendees now have the opportunity to unmute themselves if they want to ask their questions. I'm thinking the ones I've picked up are from Georgiana. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Yeah, and it is Georgiana. It's an odd one. <laughs> no, it's so nice. It's, it's, it's nice. Different. <laughs> It was just, um, I'm, I'm trying to um, get the unit four um, completed, but obviously they've lost a lot of time, the students. Mm -hmm. um, I've found the updated guidance, um, but it is little questions that are still sort of left unanswered, unless I'm looking in the wrong place. Um, like the reduced amount of content, if we can have, you know, it says a minimum of six pieces. Can we have less pieces? Because they just haven't completed the work for the amount of time they've been off over the okay. course. Do are you are you kind of just double uh, clarify that you're looking at the adaptations for the level one and level two graphic design? Well, this is what I, I, I went on to. I went on to there and it had um, a little document that's four pages long. In terms, I mean, of, the, I think I think what Georgiana wants to know, isn't it, is because they probably are you worried that your learners won't have six pieces of work? Is that the yeah? Thing? That's it. They just haven't got the time to complete them, but. Um, you know, would would sort of a smaller amount, but if they've met all the other criteria, because I understand um, that we've spoken to um, NCFE and they've said that we can tag um, yeah. like learning outcome yeah. two. Yeah. So that would be the case. I probably. think that's the best. That would be the best approach. I'm just, you see, again, this squad, this this unit isn't really about students producing extra work. It doesn't mean no. that they 
hard. It doesn't mean that they can't, but I just think it would be unfair, wouldn't it, for you to go and ask them yeah. to at this late stage. <laughs> and I'm sure it'd be yeah. quite stressful for you as well as, as an assessor to sort of be able to facilitate that and be able to assess it. If they've yeah. got, um, you know, what would put you in good stead, if you like, for your tag for Unit 4 is if they've managed to be assessed for learning outcomes 1 and 3, um, but that you know there's a tag for learning outcome two purely based on because they haven't been had the time to produce six pieces of work then then that's fine and I think that would be the best approach Georgiana really brilliant yeah okay that's great sorry that was the main main thing I wanted to clarify and just that I was yeah. looking at the right documents for the guidance because there there is so many on there it's um it's hard to navigate and find exactly mm -hmm. right yes. I did get to the graphics bit and find that one so was, and, and if, if you looking at the past portfolio that we've just looked at I mean you know some work doesn't have to be whole you know complete it might be just experimental pieces so you know yeah. you, but I'm aware though I'm not saying that you're wanting to just sort of um, I don't want to say that, that you know say something negative but I'm sure that you don't want to just sort of scrape your learners through a pass if they're on yeah. target or or you know or worthy of a higher grade so I would do what's best for your learners Georgiana and if a tag is most appropriate you know to support their other work and their other grades then I would do that okay thank you very much for your help that's great thank no, you no okay. problem our pleasure got anything they want to ask I don't think they have Leslie so oh no Georgiana has said thank you for our help you're very welcome Georgiana thank you for attending Okay, so I think that's a, a good time, I think, to, to end the webinar. Thanks, Leslie. Okay, um, no problem. Thank you very much. Take care, okay, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks again. Bye.